What's up, Sterile Processing Universe? It's Hank Balch here. You're watching another episode of Fighting Dirty on the Beyond Clean YouTube channel. If you haven't yet, subscribe to this channel. Hit the subscribe button somewhere on your screen and make sure to hit that bell. All right. What are we talking about today? We're going to be talking about sharps in our trays and in particular what the operating room team can do to keep us safe. We all want to be safe, right? No one wants to clock in intending to get hurt in sterile processing. And I feel like in the operating room, no one clocks in in the OR and says, I want to hurt someone down in SPD today. But even though it's not intentional, there can be practices and protocols that are um, ignored that can lead to unnecessary risk and injury to our SPD teams when it comes to how we manage sharps in the OR and how they're coming back down in our contaminated trays to the decontamination area. So we're going to talk about that briefly today. So what do I mean? Um, a sharp, the common sharps that we encounter would be needles, you know, suture needles, um, but also scalpel blades that are still attached or sometimes not attached uh, to knife handles that are coming down in our trays. But in addition to those disposable sharps, we just have a lot of instruments that are kind of sharp. One of the first ones that comes to mind are those towel clamps, right? Uh, those mean dirty little towel clamps. But we got galpy retractors that can also be very sharp. We've got all kinds of other retractor blades. We got skin hooks, right? There's all kinds of sharp devices in our trays. And when we package them to send them to the operating room, we're very intentional about packaging them in a way that is safe. That protects not only the sharps from any damage, but also protects the end user from being exposed to those sharps. But when they come down from the operating room many times, uh, they're not coming down with tip protectors on them. They're not coming down prepped in the tray very nice and neatly. Many times they're coming down like a bomb went off in the tray, and these sharps are pointing every which direction. And... If they're disposable sharps, many times they they have not been properly disposed of. As I said, they're still sitting in the knife handle installed, or there's a floating needle somewhere with some suture tied to it somewhere at the bottom of this tray. And this, un unfortunately, is too common of an occurrence. Uh, so we need to kind of draw the line as SPD technicians and definitely as department leaders and say, hey, we are on your team. We are your peers in surgical services, in the operating room and in sterile processing. So we're like this. We work very hard to keep you safe when we prep trays. How hard are you working to keep our team safe when you prep trays after surgery, before they come down to the decontamination area? Because, quite frankly, when we're sending trays to the OR, they are sterile. They're clean. They're sterile. They're the least dangerous they will ever be. When they come down to SPD, they are the most dangerous they will ever be because they are contaminated. And as I described many times, they're completely unprepared for safe transport and definitely for safe removal out of these case carts and these transport containers because what happens is you got towel clips that are like hanging off the side of the handle that are pointing up that are poking out of the side of the tray one million and one different types of configurations none of them safely prepped for our handling in decontam it's a travesty it's a shame and it's not going to change until we draw the line as i said both as technicians, but also as sterile processing department leaders and say, this is not okay. Not only are we not going to let you send disposable sharps down, we're going to document that, but we're going to be documenting all the other times that you're sending these trays down with these internal sharps, these reusable sharps, in ways that could um, injure and hurt our technicians. Those things have to be documented and communicated. And then collaboration has to happen from both of those teams to fix this problem. So it's a it's a big problem. I'm not the first one out there to say it. 
but maybe I'm the first one to make a video about it. I, I don't know. But hopefully this video inspires you if you're already frustrated about that or perhaps you've already been injured in a situation like this. Use this video to give you that kick in the butt to say, okay, I'm done. Now Hank is out here talking about it. I'm going to now go tomorrow and, I, and I'm going to have a conversation about it. And we're going to get this fixed, not only for me, but for the rest of my team. If you've got any other insights or stories to tell about this kind of injury risk, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. And as we tell you all the time here at Beyond Clean, until we talk to you next time, keep fighting dirty. She's at her happiest at the SPD. Only wish she was as happy when she with me I want to be her everything cause to me she's heaven sent but it seems I'm playing second fiddle to sterile instruments sonic irrigators and ultrasonic cleaners are things that matter much to her they sweeten her demeanor i'm a runner up to prep and pack and i'm starting to feel down chasing the lady who wears that triple But it leaves me cold I think sterile is as sterile does If the truth be told When I go to hug and kiss her She sometimes makes a scene And she won't let me near her Till I'm mechanically clean To sterile instruments Her passion is for decontamination If I could only change things And get her to see sense But I'm playing second fiddle To sterile Yeah.